Okay, before we continue, let's just try and do something familiar, and that is uh, see this data in an Excel file. Well, seeing it in an Excel file is familiar, but how to get it into an Excel file, let's see if we can figure out how to do that. So uh, there's a uh, an operator called Write Excel, and you can search for that, but uh, you can also search for it using the keyword export. And there you can see that there's a Write Excel. So let's bring that on. And that's going to allow us to write to an Excel file. So first let's disconnect that and let's connect this. Now it took me a, a while to figure out that uh, how to do this. And that's one thing you need to realize about uh, working with these with data is you're going to run into problems. So I had to figure out why I could, whoops, I got right, I got the wrong one here. Okay, now I have the right one. Uh, but it took me a while to figure out why this wouldn't work. Um, well, first, let's just finish. So we want to uh, fill in the parameters here and basically you just have to fill in the name of the file. Let's click. Well, actually, it looks like this might work. Let's see if this works. Um, what I mean is, sorry, that uh, this is the right for, fi file format, but the name, uh, the location, we don't have to show. Maybe let's, but anyway, this isn't going to work because, and I took, as I said, it took me quite a while to figure out why that is. And I had to do a lot of searching on Google and it probably took me about an hour and a half to figure it out. So you will run into problems and you're not always going to be able to get the answer. So I, I started to look for the answer. I couldn't find it. Then I went to the rapid minor uh, documentation, I'm sorry, the forums and the community site. And I had to ask questions. And finally, after uh, quite a while, I got the answer. Actually, it took uh, more than a day to get the answers and so on. I guess the total time that I worked on it was about 90 minutes. Okay, so let's try this and see what happens. Okay, so you get this, which is basically you didn't create the file. So that's what I, that's what happened to me. So let's go back to design. And what I learned that you have to do is you have to connect from here to here. So that doesn't seem like such a difficult thing, but as I said, the answer is simple. <laughs> but finding it is not necessarily easy. Okay, let's, uh, now it's asking me, this is what I expected and it's here now. Uh, it's asking me for the, where I want the file to go. So I click on this and this is also a little bit confusing. So that, let's see, this is, um, I'll call it products and transactions or I'll call it prod and transactions like that. Okay. And um, so I give it a name here, and then in, I would have thought I would it would have a save button here, but it has an open button, which is a little bit confusing. But anyway, now we have that, and now if we run it, it should work. And we're going to I save it in my documents folder, and I gave it this name, so I'll look for that in a moment. Okay, so here it is, and we can see it in Excel. And there it is. Okay, so we were able to write that to a Excel file. So you should practice by doing the same thing or just writing this to an Excel file and just writing this to another Excel file. So you'd have to do like if you wanted to do this one, you'd have to delete this from the screen uh, or that would probably be the easiest way to do it and delete this from the screen and connect these and so on. And hopefully you would get the right, right answer and uh, I did that already. So I have products, which I called products two, and that's the products table or the products data. And I also have this one transactions and that's the transaction data. So we have the two separate data files and let's see if we can figure out how to do this in Excel. What we just did in, uh, in rapid minor and in this is a something that you do with data tables or databases 
and you, this is called joining, and we just saw that we joined based on one attribute or one column that the, I think it was called product ID, and uh, we joined based on that. And uh, that the kind of join we did, there are various forms of joining, and the one that we did, if you recall, was called an inner join. So there are other types of joins, and they do slight, they do different things. And you need to study inner joins, and there's something called outer joins, there's something called left join, there's something called right join. So you could look that up and uh, learn about that. We're not going to do that now. We're just going to try and run an inner join in Excel. So we were able to do it here in Rapid Miner. It might just be useful to see it done in Excel. Okay, so we created both the products table and the transactions table and we have them open here and we wanted to combine them in the same way that rapid miner did it and what did rapid miner do well we noticed that there's a column here called product id and there's a pr column here called product id so that's necessary in order to do a join you have to have a col uh, the same column name in both tables. So let's focus here on the transactions table. So here we have product ID 154, uh, 154. And here we have a transaction where this customer, uh, I guess, purchased this product. And this was the amount that they purchased. But we don't have the information in the transaction table about what category this product was in, and we don't have the price, and we don't have the name. All we have is the product ID, which might be typical for a transactions table. They don't give all of that information when they're just listing a transaction. But now we'd like to see what is the product name. Maybe we could have the name here. And what is the product category? Maybe we could have the product category here. And what is the product price? Maybe we could have that here. So we'd like to add in that extra information if it's available. But of course, in the products table here, it is available. In other words, once we know the product ID is 154, we can scroll down to 154 here. And we can see that, that the name of the product is this, Locaine Powder. And this is, I guess, the category, and this was the price. So we can add in this stuff because we can look up in this table, product ID equals 154, and then get this information. And that's what we did. That's what happened in Rapid Miner. So we could put this here like that. And that's what we want, but we want it for each. So what are we doing? We're taking the customer ID, I'm sorry, the product ID here, and we are looking, using this table to look it up. This is kind of like a dictionary. And once we find the entry, which is in this case from here, the first row, so 154 is the product ID. Once we find that in here, we can get the, like the definition or the extra information here and paste it in here. So this is kind of like a dictionary, or they call it a lookup table. So we're going to treat the products as the lookup table and the transactions as the final result. We're going to add the final results into the transactions, not vice versa. Now, we could have added the final results into here, but the problem with doing that is that if we go here, we have a product... Um, ID of one, we could look up, but there are going to be many of these that are going to have a product ID of one. And so we won't know what to put here. And besides that, this is going to be a much shorter amount of uh, rows. This only has a few rows compared to the transactions table here, which has many rows. So we're going to put the results in the transactions table because if we did it the other way, we wouldn't know what to put in here because there are many transactions that have uh, this product ID. But these product IDs are unique here. There's a, 
because this is the product table. So it only tells you, it just tells you for each product ID what it is. So again, this is kind of like a dictionary. And here's the key. And we look up the key. And then we put the rest of the results over here. That's what we're trying to do in this section. And that's what we did with Rapid Miner as well. Okay, so we have both the, the products table and the transactions table. And I'm going to add a sheet here, take this sheet and move it, copy it to the transactions sheet. So I'll have them both in the same workbook. Okay, now I have the uh, retrieve products and the transactions in the same workbook. Let me get rid of this. Now we're going to use a formula in uh, Excel and see if we can get the results that we got with the uh, join in Rapid Miner. So it's called VLOOKUP. You can see it here. And you can see that I, I highlighted the commas. So there's one comma, another comma, and another comma. So there's the th three commas. So that means there's four entries that go into the VLOOKUP function. We, what we have to do, remember that our two tables have something in common. There's a product ID here, and there's a product ID here. So they, both, they have that in common. Now, which one is longer? Let's see, uh, this one, the product table is only 179, but here I do that and I do control and shift and I go down to the, maybe I can just do control and hit the down arrow. Let's see what happens. Yeah, it goes all the way down. And I can see that this has 23, 29 that many rows. So this is a lot more rows. So what I'm going to do is work with this table like this. Let's see if I can do the same trick. Control and hit the arrow key. It takes me to the top without having to scroll. And now I'm going to use a VLOOKUP formula. Now it's not going to be exactly like this, but it's going to be fairly close. So let's see. So what goes in here is the variable, which is common to both tables or both sheets. So that was the product ID. So I want it to be B2, not A2. Uh, customer ID was not common to this. There's no customer ID here. That's not common to this, but product ID is. So I want to so the first uh, entry in here should be what's common to both. So uh, so basically, I want to look up product ID in this in the retrieve products table. So uh, we'll so that's what has to go first, and this formula goes right in here. So it goes here, and we have to do equals equals v lookup, and the first thing, the first entry is this. So b two, but we can look at it again, and we see some dollar sign in front, so we need to put that in front. And then what goes next is the range of cells we want to search through. So let's go back to here. So let's suppose that we're trying to get the product name. So this is here. Okay, so then we want, this is called the, where we're going to look for the value. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this column and this column together. We're going to take that range of cells. So from uh, A2 and then all the way down to the bottom of this, B, whatever it is at the bottom. We want to identify those cells. That's where we're going. That's called the lookup. So we're going to look up the product ID in here and then get the corresponding product name. So this, these two columns together are, are called the lookup uh, or the table array. So you can see here it's called the table array. So actually, I guess I could, so uh, I guess I could just select them and say these are the ones, this is where I want to look. 
and you can see how it writes this. See, I have, uh, going back to my, this here, <clears throat> you can see how it, how it writes it. It says B2, that's this cell. So we want to look up, uh, something in the other, in the retrieve products table that has a product of D of, for example, 154. And this part here, the second, uh, after the first comma, says that this is where we want to look. So look at how it re refers to retrieve products. This table, or this sheet, it puts the name of the sheet with quotation mark, and then the name of the uh, sheet. Uh, didn't work, did it? Okay, well, we'll have to change this to retrieve products, but we'll do that in a minute. Okay, what comes next is, let's look at our guide here. It's a two. So that I means we want the second column here. And I'm also going to leave the default here as false, this example here. So it's two and false. So I'm going to leave that as it is. And I do need to change this. I don't know why it doesn't to it, but I want retrieve products. And now let's see if this works. Okay, so it seems to have worked. And in fact, I should have put a title for the column. And I'll just change the width and the color just to say that this is something that we just added in. Okay, so now we've done that. Now we can just copy this formula down. So let's check it again. Here's the formula. We can just copy this formula down to the end. So let's try and do that. So let's select it. So let me just drag it. And so maybe I have to drag it all the way to the end. Okay, now I got some errors, and that's because I forgot to edit what's up here properly. Let's take a look at it again. So I have to have a dollar sign in front of the J, a dollar sign in front of this number. I have to have a dollar sign here and a dollar sign there. And I don't have any of those here. So let me try and fix that. Okay, so I edited that, and let's try dragging this down. Okay, and hopefully this worked. Okay, now let's see how we would get the next one, which was after the product name, the next one was product category and even price. Let's try price also. Okay, so how do we get this one? So let's go back to here. We did VLOOKUP V2. We're, this is the, we're looking for this customer ID in the other table, in the retrieve products table. So it does exist somewhere, uh, product ID somewhere, 154. We have to go down to 154. And here it is. Okay. So that's that. But we also, now we want to search through not the product name, but the product category. So how can we do that? And then we're also going to want to search through the price. So how can we do that? So what I'm going to do is all I'm going to change here is I'm going to say instead of we're, we're searching through A2 to B, this number here, I'm going to change it so that I'm searching through the entire table. So from A, not to B, but to C to D. Remember, we were here at B, but we also want to do this one and this one, so C and D. So I want to change this to D instead of B. But then this is the column number, and I don't want the second column number this time. I just did that. I want the third column, so I'll put in three. So let's see what I have here. So now I have A to D, like I said, and we want the third column. And that gives us this entry, the product category. So the product category is here. And for our example, I guess it was two. And then we can do the same thing for price. So all we have to do here is copy this over to here. But it gives us the same thing because it's the same formula exactly. But um, we want to change this part to four and hit enter. Okay, and now we can copy both of these down. And hopefully we won't get any errors. So now we have done what we did in Rapid Miner. We've done it in Excel. And we have the customer ID that's one, 
two, three, four, five, six columns. And this is the result from the rapid minor exercise we did. And this also has the same six columns. They're not in the same order. So we could just switch around the order and we could sort them and so on. But it's the same data. So we were able to accomplish that in Excel.